All right, let's move into birth. So we started off just going through birth and in the first one, let me check the time. We just had one kind of going through, but we, we got to a certain point and everything just stopped. And there was a midwife type lady and she said that that was right as the baby is Okay, I'm just gonna have to describe it with my hands. Now let's do it with a balloon. First of all, you've got the baby in the uterus, and this is the cervix, and this is opening and opening, and the baby's head is slowly coming out through here. It's not actually engaging with the pelvic floor to start off with. It's just contractions here, and this is pulling back the cervix around the baby's head and you've got the pelvic floor here and then at a certain stage so let me do it on me so you've got the cervix there and breathing and contractions breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out and the cervix is slowly opening breathing in breathing out breathing in it's a fast version of birth breathing in, <laughs> breathing in. until it gets down to here where it won't go up anymore because the pressure is directly in. And you get, this is the first transmission. This is the first energy activation. It gets to this point and what happens is the contraction stop. And there's this very blissful time as the hormones change from a, what's it called endorphins to endorphin braced to adrenaline braced and in that exchange there's a ecstatic feeling so and that is quite often rushed through but we're going to just sit into that place while the cervix is wrapped around our head here and that is an activation it's not just the hormones that are activating what is happening in that point for me is it activates the pineal gland the pituitary gland the thalamus that whole third eye complex is initiated and opened while you sit into that first activation so we'll be sitting into that first activation and just waiting there and letting that fully complete and then when that's done automatically when that activation is happening you don't have to try and get them started the contractions start happening again but they're stronger it's changed they're more now the head is through and it's come through the cervix and the baby's head is now starting in the vagina and starting to press into the vulva. If, the, if you push here, let's throw that balloon away. Don't say I don't go out of my way for you. <laughs> so, the white balloon is the diaphragm of the mother and, and the abdomen of the mother. And the pink balloon is the um, uterus. And you've got the breath of the mother breathing in. See how they're lying, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Now, and then you get the contractions breathing in and holding, but within that you still got breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, the mother slowly working as you get these big long contractions and then spaces in between. Um, but to start off with, you don't want to push because the, baby's, you, the baby needs to be have its head out of the cervix into the vagina and pressing into the vulva and then at that, at that stage you need something behind the 
uterus. So as when the contractions happen, if something's behind it, then the baby gets expelled out through the, the vagina. Um, so you can hold in too. That is when we start working with the lengthways breath is in this stage and that automatically opens the baby through the vagina and, and through the cervix, through the vulva. My brain's gone. I don't know if I'm making sense. Halfway through, so there's that connection to the vulva. The energy changes. The energy in the uterus is the fire circuit. So there's that energy as we're working with the initial energy. Sorry, I, I keep looking at what people are writing. Um, so the, vul the, the uterus has got the fire energy. When you drop down into the vagina, this is a much stronger um, blue energies. It's a horror for the blue energy. The energy changes and then when you come to the vulva it's changed again. So there's an initiation halfway through the cervix. There's kind of initiation when it, the head is making more contact with the vulva. And then, I don't know if it's in birth, but when the baby, the same as for the baby, it's two births really, the baby's being born out of the uterus and through the cervix and then it's being birthed again through the uh, vulva and halfway out in the same time when you've got the vulva wrapped around we're going to wait there and this is another initiation that again initiates the third eye the thalamus the whole third ventricle and pineal, that whole area, it's an initiation. So we're going to wait there for a little bit of time, allow that initiation. See, it's not a real birth. We don't have to hurry. We can hang out in the initiations that we may not have got in our original birth or not for a long time. As now, I think a lot of the more new age midwives, they, they kind of get the mothers to hang out in the spaces. So it's not just a full on go, 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 you know, hang out between the contractions, sleep between the contractions, hang out in these natural spaces. So it's not this rush to the end. Enjoy the whole journey of it. Now, if mothers were to do holographic breathing, they wouldn't be in pain. All of the mothers who have learned holographic breathing for birth feel little to no pain. And I think it's because, and when I taught it to mothers and they're pregnant, they say the baby knows what they're doing. First of all, they can feel it getting excited and then they say it just relaxes and drops deep down into their uterus. So the baby's already kind of know it. I think this is how babies breathe in the womb. But when mothers use holographic breathing, there is no pain, so or little pain. They say taken down by about 70% or, or is just ecstatic, there's no pain. So in that scenario, it becomes much easier to sit in, and they're more comfortable, so it's sit into these initiations. Then naturally the contractions are stopping and you come out through the vulva and it's down to your shoulders. So now that longitudinal motion that was from the head to the pelvis has gone. It's now from the shoulders to the pelvis, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. Before it was initiating the brain. The first lengthways breathing was initiating the brain and those two initiations were initiating the third eye, all the hormones, the thalamus, the pineal gland, all that pituitary gland, that whole area. Comes down to the shoulders, now it's from the shoulders to the pelvis, breathing in, breathing out, breathing out. This initiates the lungs. This brings the breath into the lungs. And in that place, get my pelvis out. I don't know why I've got the pelvis out. Um, all right. 
uh, when the baby's being born, its face comes round into the sacrum. So the back of the head is facing to the pubic arch. The face is into the sacrum. So the back of the head coming out first like this. And then the shoulders are sideways. They're here and here. And they can't come out because the bones are in the way. So what happens is the baby has to turn one way or the other. So it turns and now the shoulder can come under the pubic arch here. So it turns from the shoulders being sideways to the shoulders being lengthways and the first shoulder can come under there and then once that shoulder's out, the second shoulder can come out through from the sacrum. And then once the shoulders are out, the baby can be just delivered. Now again, don't rush to the breath. We're going to wait. We're going to rest. And for the mother and the baby, and this is the next initiation, the whole pressure has changed. Before that, there was this whole pressure on your chest. But as soon as you're fully out, that pressure goes. Also, the umbilical cord is getting cool and all of the fluid in the umbilical cord, all the jelly is going solid and that is cutting off the blood flow and the oxygen for the baby. And with this less pressure taken on, off, and the build-up of carbon dioxide, this is the next initiation. <gasps> baby takes its first breath, breathing in, breathing out. And this, from not having much oxygen, because through birth the umbilical cord is getting pressed, to suddenly breathing with the lungs, the whole lungs opening, all the capillaries in the lungs opening, the flow of the blood into the lungs opening. There's a big change. The placenta is part of the baby and it's been feeding blood, oxygen, nutrients back and forth between the baby. The placenta is not part of the mother. The placenta is part of the baby. The blood that is flowing back and forth to the placenta is being pumped by the baby's heart. So in the womb, you're in this sac, and that sac is the extension of the placenta. The fluid inside that sac has come out from the baby. The blood flow from the baby's heart is going to the placenta. The carbon dioxide, toxins are flowing out through the placenta into the mother. Then the oxygen nutrients are coming back into the placenta and it's the baby's heart that is pumping that blood back to its heart and then round the body. So the placenta is part of the baby. The placenta in the womb is part of your anatomy. It's your friend. And when you come out, suddenly that friend, that part of you, whole bit like losing your abdomen and lungs or something, suddenly isn't there. You're not just activating the breath, you're moving from one world to another. You're moving from being breathing from the placenta to breathing with your lungs and the breath. And so it's a big change, it's a big initiation. <gasps> and we're going to spend time getting used to that change. And then when that's ready, we'll start working our way to our own breast. We start breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, holographic breathing is just like a subtle form of breastfeeding. The so next activation activates the digestion, well, it connects the heart of the mother back to the heart of the baby, but it also initiates the hara, the abdomen, the digestion. Before that, you were dependent on the placenta and the blood of the mother. That is dying. That is dropping away. You're being reborn from the placenta to a new life. 
and you're still connected to the mother. The food is still coming from the mother, but through your mouth rather than through your navel. This is another initiation. It activates the hara. It activates your earth, your connection to the earth. It activates your digestion, activates all the organs. This is another initiation. So we're going to sit into that initiation. And then finally, the last initiation through this whole thing we've been the mother and baby together through this birth. We are the mother giving birth to ourselves as the baby. We merge back into one. And this is the final initiation. So that is what we're going to do. Ha, 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 ha.